So we live together. Yep. We watch football together. Yep. We talk about football together. Yep. Why don't we just start a podcast? Sounds like a plan to me. We're back! All right, a week away from the channel. Obviously, we had our own little things going on, but the show is back, man. Again, still no name. <laughs> yeah. We're still thinking about nice it. Nice vibes, man. Yeah, we're just chilling, nice man. Vibes. Just chilling. Uh, how was your week, bro? Good, good. Um, first time I've stayed at a hotel ma- football. Mm. You know what I mean? That was a great experience. And the thing is, it wasn't only that. I got the 99 suite. Ooh, what's that about? When I was in there, yeah. So everything is designed for um, the treble winning season. So it has Fergie quotes, like when he's like, football's a mad thing or whatever. Um, it's got Roy Keane talking about the spirit of the team, David Beckham, like all the quotes on the wall and that, yeah. It's got it's got Jeff Shreves, not Jeff Shreves, um, Clive Tilsley, sorry, mm. writing of all the match notes and stuff. You open the closet, it's got the, it's the four-headed stri- the strikers. That's sick. I, everything, even when you went to go get the hairdryer. It says hair dryer treatment. Yeah, you know I mean? that's cool. It was it was so it was so sick, man. And um, and obviously Old Trafford's right outside, mm. so that was nice. Just did some stuff with um for the new little kits that we got coming out. So yeah, that was that was mm. fun, man. That was fun. United yeah, so. rep mm. <laughs> on that Glazers payroll, yeah. <laughs> <Say no more. laughs> what about you, man? You listen. Yeah. You got a new occupation now, ain't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, so Pinnell. hold on. We got what pundit, mm. podcaster, yeah, uh, documentary yep. uh, features, journalist, yeah, Algerian journalist, journalist. Yeah, journalist. <laughs> yeah, journalist. and now uh, commentator. commentator. Wow. Yeah, man. Multifaceted, didn't it, bro? Pff, what an experience. Honestly, mm. first of all, yo, the trip was crazy, bro. Yeah. Qatar was. Um, what well, probably the best trip of my life, bro. Honestly, mm. with the SDS guys, with a few of like uh, just content creators in general, yeah. the game was a massive success. We we got I think seven million pounds mm-hmm. donated to education above all. So big up to everybody who donated for that. And then yo, the commentary job. Mm. Tell you what, the craziest thing was the next day, going on TikTok and just scrolling, and every time I just kept hearing my voice. Yeah, like, it's crazy. And then I'm seeing Katka and Ed and Hazard yeah, reposting yeah. some of that. It's just That's a crazy. surreal experience, bro. So yo, they're saying I got left off bad bad and bougie. Who's <laughs> 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 That's the Isaiah Thomas quote. It's like I, I met the criteria. <laughs> I just wasn't chosen. Hey, next year we're gonna. Uh, I think they want to do it again for sure. Yeah, was by hook or by crook. I had commitments as well. Yeah, no, of time. course, yeah, of course. I mean, but by hook or by crook. Yeah, yeah. Next yeah, year we're gonna get you sure, on 100. Sure. But no, that was an amazing experience. But yo, back to the important stuff. Yes. We're both back in the same studio. Our living room. Uh-huh. Yeah. And let's talk about the big game since we've been gone. Mm-hmm. The Carabao Cup final. First of all, congratulations to Liverpool. Mm-hmm. Big, big, tr- big trophy for them in what's going to be Klopp's final year. I'm sure they're going to be hoping it's not the last one. But let's talk about it in general, right? I feel like it's a tale of two sides here. Mm. Because with Liverpool, the main talking point is really like, wow. What with half their team almost, what, what felt like half their team kind of missing Salah, Trent, Sobot Sly, Allison. Um, Darwin Nunez, Jota, all these big figures that normally start for them mm-hmm. were missing. And they kind of relied on a lot of young players that we don't really know much about. They came in in a moment where like, yo, <laughs> we need you to kind of perform. And they, they performed quite well. Big up the club, big up the Van Dyke, who we'll talk about in a bit as well too. But then the flip side is Chelsea, who, mm. bro, they've had a, an up and down season for sure. Uh, <laughs> literally, like sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe yeah. shit. Just describes them better than anything. But they had an opportunity really at their feet today mm. or at, at the weekend where they were playing against the weaker opposition. They were going into extra time where the opposition were bringing on young players that have never played at this level. And you really felt like this was a moment where they had to put their foot on the opposition's neck. When, like we know Chelsea in the, in the past at least, have been able to do in these Wembley finals. Mm-hmm. And it's another moment, probably summed up best by Gary Neville. <laughs> the, the What is it? The blue mm. billion dollar or billion pound uh, bottle jobs. Yeah. Disappointing, man. Yeah, I mean, look, Chelsea, it's crazy because obviously got Chelsea family members, got Chelsea friends. And, mm. mate, like, this is honestly the worst I've seen them in terms of, like, how they feel after a game. I'm like, you know, you think about the Carabao Cup, which is notoriously seen as, like, the lesser competition. Mm-hmm. But you wouldn't think it, you know what I mean? You wouldn't think it with the way the Chelsea fans are feeling, which is kind of good. I guess it maybe adds some importance to the Cup by the same time. It's obviously probably a representation of where they are. And obviously you're losing with on the in the game with kids on the pitch. Now look, at the end of the day, it's not like they got absolutely 
popped by the kids and the kids nah, went man. and scored. So it was still a, a monster player, a monster figure and Van Dyke that done it from a set piece. Do you know what I mean? So it's still them, anything could have happened in them situations. So I wouldn't be too... Gary Neville's thing was a little bit harsh. It was a bar though. Huh? Yeah, it hey, was a bar. Hey. It was a bar. But he was trying to... One thing, I was like, just stand on it. He was trying to take it back the other day yeah, on yeah, Monday yeah. Night Football. I'm yeah, like, just yeah. stand on it. But um, at the same time, look, it is a harsh, harsh term, but the reason why I'll say it is because there was, there was fear in Chelsea, you know? And, and Pochettino came out and said that we were looking for penalties after a while because the players were tired. Now, I always talk about the character of a manager. I always talk about the personality. Yeah. Chelsea don't want to hear that. They're not a club that want to hear that, especially when they, the, the modern fan has come from a Jose's. The the really modern fans have come from a Conte's. You yeah. know what I mean? Them kind of But even past that, right? Like, again, you talk about Liverpool were the ones bringing on kids in that extra exactly, time period. Exactly, exactly. That's where you would expect Chelsea yeah. to push for it. And Liverpool, if anything, are like, yeah. all right, let's try and see and, this and, out. And this is the thing. That's the, like, Poch saying that. But then that's when I look at it and I'm like, there's no reason why the Liverpool youngsters should come on a pitch and look better than Nonny and look better than Mudrick. Those are the ones who I'm looking at. Like, you guys came on and did absolutely nothing mm. you know what i'm trying to say and that's like where i'm like look it goes back to what i'm saying you just have a lot of average players at the same time you yeah. know what i mean chelsea so look disappointing for them massive disappointment their season's over pretty much well yeah. if they're going to try and get europe but i would say best they're going to get is conference league that's a failure at that's a best. failure but at then, I, I guess so really they're that's, struggling i was going to say that's a failure but i guess this is really the big talking point for today right even to this day, we're still kind of talking about Chelsea, rightly or wrongly, with the idea and with the image of the previous Chelsea in our heads. Yeah. And I looked at this game at the weekend, and I look at how both teams have kind of played out this season. And you couldn't really have two different clubs at this point, I would, mm. I would say. Liverpool are a club that even with Klopp kind of going out the, the, the back door at the end of the season, they firmly know who they are. Mm. Liverpool have a manager that basically has the cl one of the clearest identities in world football mm -hmm. that adheres as well to what the club's history and culture has always been. They're a club that trusts in youth. They're a club that plays attacking football. They're a club like this is Liverpool football club. Like under Hodgson, it wasn't. This mm -hmm. is the the epitome of what Liverpool football club is. But with Chelsea, I almost look at it that since Todd, Todd Bowley has kind of taken over the club. Yeah, it's still called Chelsea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they wear the same color. Yeah, they play at Stamford Bridge. The fans are the same. But everything else is like, it's a brand new club, bro. Mm. There's nothing about this current iteration of the football club that resembles the last 20 years of Chelsea. Mm. And I guess the question for both of us today is, do Chelsea and do does Todd Bowley have a responsibility to mm. respect what Chelsea were before? in terms of the identity that they had, the philosophy that they had, the way the club was run? Mm -hmm. Or is it as simple as like it's a new era and we should just completely forget everything, mm. forget the past, forget history, that doesn't matter anymore? That's a tough question. You it know? is. Because I think it, like it also goes into other clubs as yeah, well too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's difficult because of when Chelsea's success started, right? So Chelsea's success started in 2000. I don't want to sound like them Twitter fans, but it really started in 2004, right? So that's when it started getting going. And they were such a different club in terms of obviously Roman came in and um, brought in Jose Mourinho. And Jose Mourinho had the, the, the stiff back four. He had Paulo, Paulo Ferreira was pretty much a centre back himself. Yeah. Gallas, he yeah. And they had Galas. It pretty much it felt like four centre back. It was a very rigid team. So it was like, then you went on and you got rid of him and you brought in Villas Boas's um, and Chalotis and these type of guys who are also different to Jose Mourinho, right? And then you look at what they did with Conte, who I want to say is like Jose, but it's a bit more like, all right, defense, tough, which is kind of like a Jose Mourinho kind of team. So they've gone through different things. But the one thing Chelsea have always had, and this is one thing that people need to remember, even going back in the day, is they always relied on star quality. Now you go back to in the day, Chelsea won the first team to be bringing in foreign players. Mm. Viali, Di Matteo, Zula, yeah. Zula, you know, Zola. Yeah. Pull it. Yeah. They were the ones that were doing Masso, Desai. They were doing this Deshaun, all yeah. them dates. Petit. Yeah. Chelsea have always been this team that relied on that, right? And then Abramovich carried it on. So when people are talking like Abramovich, Abramovich carried it on by bringing in Drogba and Pe Petr and all these guys. So they've always been a team that relied on star quality. That's how I see it. Going in, um, they brought in Balak, Shevchenko. I can go name after name, right? So now when I look at this team, I'm like, what they are devoid of is star quality. 
they 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 reduced it to a young players, young exciting players, but there's a lack of stars and leaders. Them names that I just mentioned, they were leaders. I was gonna say, plus yeah. Poyet as well. Yeah, yeah. They were leaders, and so are the Jogbas, and so are the Balaks, yeah. and so are these. They're all leaders, and that's what I always Attribute associate to Chelsea, Chelsea yeah, yeah. to: real men, mm. stars. Yeah. That's how I see Chelsea. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now I'm looking at this as this young, cute project, and I'm like. It doesn't really resonate with their fans either. Their no, fans no, no. are yeah, very yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, just I don't know, man. Their I, fans are very laddish, and it, it, I just look at the the disconnect between yeah. the fans and the players on the pitch at the moment. It doesn't seem like a no, hundred percent. I think like when you were talking about the star players, like the thing that I was like thinking about more than anything is like, as Fuad Kadani likes to say it, mm -hmm. real men like that was the real men team in mm -hmm. England. There was like a, a time at Chelsea where. You looked at their just like the squad in general. You had club cap you had players in their club mm. that were captains for their national yeah. team. Shevchenko for Ukraine, mm -hmm. John Terry for England, Drogba for Ivory Coast, mm -hmm. Essien for Ghana, Petr Cech uh for, for the Czech Republic. And then even amongst Balak. the squad, you had yeah, Balak for Germany. And then you still had guys like Lampard, who was one of the vice captains mm -hmm. for England. You had Ashley Cole, mm -hmm. you had Pat, like Ricardo Carvalho. Mm -hmm. Like these were still like leaders, senior players, players mm -hmm. that had been there, done that. And what you attributed to that Chelsea team more than anything was they were hard to beat. Yeah. They were they were aggressive. They were physical monsters. You talk about how Drogba changed basically how teams lined up with a striker. Yeah, yeah. They were just like you hated playing against mm -hmm. Chelsea. And then you look even past that, the way the club was run as well too. And I know it's a little bit diff different now, especially with financial fair play. You can't just be affording to the sack managers, but they were a lot more ruthless in terms of like they hired a serial winners. Like mm -hmm. their managers typically, Bar uh, Villas Boas, mm -hmm. were players that had, or managers that had track records of, of winning big mm -hmm. things. They bought big names, like you said. And, and when those big names didn't work, they were ruthless in bringing mm -hmm. in another big name. Mm -hmm. And you just look at the, the current iteration, everything I've just described, it's almost the opposite. Mm -hmm. You look at in terms of serial winner and manager, they have Mauricio Pochettino. Mm. If you want to talk about the opposite of a Chelsea manager, mm -hmm. I don't think it can be more possible to get that than mm -hmm. Mertz. He managed Spurs for God's sake. Yeah. And then you look at the squad as well too, kind of like you're saying, where you had grown, aggressive, strong leaders mm -hmm. in your team, you now have, forget about even just young players, they're flimsy, bro. Yeah, They're yeah. not players that you really want to go to war with. Yeah, like yeah. Mudrik, for example. Yeah. Maduweke, yeah. yeah. Like it's, it's, it's really just a squad of like, probably overrated, overpaid, mm -hmm. uh, over expensive mm. young players that you're really just banking on a future with. But again, the, the bigger point is, does Chelsea have to do this? Mm -hmm. Like, do they have to kind of like try and find this new image as a club? Mm. Or has Todd Bowley gone completely to 180? I mean, even with what you were saying earlier in terms of the players, the, the clubs, no, sorry, the managers, sorry, that have been there. You look at Villas Boas, as you mentioned, you're even forgetting Scolari. He yeah. tried to switch it up. It but, was at like, least the, but at least Scolari. Like, at here, least Scolari, though? though. Again, he's mm -hmm. had a track record as like yeah. uh, as like a win. He won the yeah, World yeah. Cup of Brazil. No, but what I'm saying is, there's been managers that have tried to change Chelsea's I, kind of philosophy and their identity. And I think Tuchel was probably a good li little mix between the two. Yeah. A little bit of a modern manager and a little bit of a the old school way. And they won the Champions League from it. All right, they didn't really kick on from there, but mm -hmm. they won a major trophy from there. So, with what you're saying. I don't think he needs to completely rip it rip it up. But at the same time, what we are saying is what we have known of Chelsea. But is that what we're saying necessarily an identity of Chelsea? That's up for debate. People can say, well, what if there's not much stars in the game? What can we do? Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So that could be a rebuttal to that, So I, which I understand. But, but I, my yeah. thing is, Chelsea... Now, it's weird because identity doesn't have to be how it is on the pitch, right? No, of course. Yeah, for yeah. me, Chelsea... Have a, from from the last 20, 25 years or whatever, win first. Win first. That's what their fans love. That's what they're growing up on. Win first. And now I'm looking at this Chelsea and it just feels like that's not their priority. It's not to win first. It's to, it's just to kind of, especially when you're looking at the long-term contracts and they're getting rid of the youth. It kind of just feels like they want to build, but I don't know how they are planning to build that. It's such a... Chelsea are so hard to kind of like nail down because I don't know how they're trying to do it because you rip up every... You you get rid of all your experience. And I was never in favor of getting rid of all their experience. The Jorginho, Kante, and all these guys that have won with them. Listen, people are going to laugh, but I was always saying that I think they should have kept Mason Mounts and stuff. People that actually are associated with the club. When you rip it all up in one, then I think, yes, it's too drastic. Going back to your question... 
Because if you are going to do it, then they tried it with Hazard, Oscar and Matter. You know what I mean? All right, cool. But there were still some leaders. There were still some men there, blah, blah, blah. And then, okay, you can slowly try and change it. But you get rid of all your experience and then bring in these new guys while you have new ownership, then pretty much, yes, it is a new club. Mm. It is a new club. It's Chelsea by name, but it's a new club. Yeah. It is. There's it's nothing There's that. nothing recognizable with the, the previous no. regime. And to your point about fans really struggling to resonate with it, mm-hmm. of course, bro. Like, you, you support, okay, you support a club because like that that's more than anything. You're born into it, whatever. Mm-hmm. But also you, you grow to, to love a club yeah. based on like your relationship and like the, the feelings you have towards mm-hmm. players, the, the way you used to play. Like yeah. Ar- Arsenal fans, like they fell in love with Henri, they fell yeah. in love with Wenger and they therefore fell in love with how Arsenal played. And then yeah. when a guy like Unai Emery came in, yeah. that was almost like so different to that, yeah. bro, it, it was it's easy to say no because he didn't win. Yeah. But even if they had win, even even when they were winning, no. it didn't feel the no. same as as when it was it's, this it's, guy. Ain't it the same with us and with Man United and LBG? Uh, perfect example. It's, it's a complete. It's a complete. It's a complete different. You always yeah. feel like some clubs should have that kind of identity, but the only reason why it's kind of weird with Chelsea is because, as I mentioned, is that. Chelsea started winning in the last couple of 20 years. You wouldn't say it's associated to the... You wouldn't say it's associated but, to 50, but, but 60 Cam, years. But Cam, we you know associate Arsenal to Arsene Wenger. Mm. But before Arsene so Wenger George was Graham there, he was, was George Graham wasn't playing this, yeah, this beautiful 3 4 So Arsene Wenger, rightly or wrongly, has shaped the way that modern mm-hmm. day football fans and their fan base has viewed the way Arsenal play. But the difference is with that is that that comes down to having a generational coach, right? So yes, a generational coach can shape your image, I'm pretty sure Man City will... They, when you listen to, to their fans talking about who they want as a replacement... Yeah, they're pep. They're, they're saying it's early yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. because that's the way they see their club now. It's the same way with United. I mean, Fergie is 70% of our history. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that's why think- everything... Everyone's talking about United DNA. Look, I'm not old enough to go back to what Sir Matt Busby was playing. Because I was going to say, the, but, the Busby babes, historically, mm-hmm. they also played like this yeah. free-flowing, fast, mm-hmm. counter-attacking football. But was Ron Atkinson and all these kind of managers, they weren't playing that, right? Um, yeah. Going up to got up to Fergie. But it's Fergie that kind of like, for our generation and stuff, that's painted our image of what Manchester United should be. So when we see a De Zerbi, I'm sorry, when we see a, a, a LVG or whatever, or Jose Mourinho, we're kind of selling our soul. We feel like we're selling our souls a but little don't, bit. Don't you think, though, with Chelsea, okay, because it's such a small, smaller sample size, this guy, what I'm going to say, is the, like the equivalent of those other guys. Mm. Mourinho was the guy who basically yeah. shaped what Chelsea yes. was. Yeah. So then Conte is like in the mold of Mourinho. Yeah. Tuchel's in the mold more yeah, so of yeah, Mourinho. Yeah. And maybe if you're looking for a modern-day manager to, to replicate what Chelsea used mm-hmm. to be, Maybe a Diego Simeone. Bro, is I like, always say Chelsea should have should have hired. And, and here's the thing too, right? Times I always say. LNG. And here's the thing too. When we talk about identity, it doesn't have to be also like the patterns of play you play, or like even like the style of play you play. Like mm-hmm. this idea too of like Chelsea. One of the things that I always think of when I think of the old school Chelsea mm-hmm. is like these guys will leave everything on the line, mm-hmm. man. They will literally put in a, a, a foot. Yeah. They have guys who will put their head where others are afraid to put yeah. their feet. Like Diego Simeone, Simeone is a manager that would like encourage that kind of play. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. have to be like, oh, how do you build up from the back? Mm-hmm. Or like, do you play counterattacking from the wings? It can really just be the spirit of the team yeah. is a Chelsea team. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, I, I, I fully agree. And the thing is, yeah, with Chelsea as well, with what I was going back to is that there's th- that kind of like a little bit of star, that stardust is what always kept them. Like, remember, the, do you anyone remember? Like they used to be called the Kings Road Boys because... One, it was about glitz and glamour. It was about glitz and glamour at Chelsea on Kings Road, Kings Road boys. That's what they were called. So like now when you're looking at this bunch, right, with no stars, bunch of young guys, as you mentioned, flimsy, so away from what Chelsea used to be, it's, it is it is unrecognizable, bro. Mm. It is. And who is the, um, oh, I mentioned, there's somebody that I'm missing. There's one Chelsea. Oh, the new guys. Or the no, old, guys. old school, bald. Uh, bald. Not Biali, saying- the other you. Oh, um, LeBuff. LeBuff. Yeah, Frank LeBuff. Real yeah, men, yeah. bro. <laughs> Yo, real men. <laughs> you know, real men all over the yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. That's what Ch- That's why I associate Chelsea with. But going yeah. to your point, though, like, you asked them if, do you think every club should have a set identity? Because there's only one club that I can really Brighton think, think they have identity now. I'm sure if they win the Zerbi, yeah, they're, they're going to try and get another. No, 100%. The reason they hired the Zerbi was because mm. he was of the Potter mold. 100%. Yeah. The only club at the elite level that I can really think of that, like, doesn't have a set in stone identity as Real Madrid. Like that's the only one I can think of that have never like win committed first. The, no win first, but they've never committed themselves to like a footballing philosophy that they have to adhere by. Like mm. they really are like I mean I guess Galacticos and like what do you think the reason for that is? And I, I, it's weird. This might be random, right? But 
Do you think the reason for that is because Real Madrid have never really prioritized their academy? I was just going to say the same thing. I promise you I was going to say the same thing. Do you thing. think that? Of course. I was looking at it, right? Raul came from Atletico, right? Yeah. I don't know if they classed him as a Real Madrid academy player. And then Casillas came from Real Madrid. Madrid goalkeeper, okay? yeah. After that, bro, like it's, no, it's you're, honestly, you're you might think you got Mario Ratos in there, you got Juan Fran, you got guys that made it out of other teams. But Real Madrid have never really prioritized the academy, and I feel like academy. When you think about the teams that have identity, Manchester, well, that try and have an identity, yeah. Manchester United, Manchester Barcelona, yeah. Ajax, these are clubs that are synonymous with their academy. Mm-hmm. So do you think it's something that got to do with that, that Real Madrid haven't got one? Or do you think most clubs that have that identity built in them is because it stems from the academy? I think, I think it, the academy is definitely a good point. But I think also the clubs that you just named also had leading figures that were like, you talk about like the, the biggest men in football. Mm, to be that have, Cruyff was I was going to say Cruyff is Ajax and Barcelona. Mm. Ferguson of Manchester United, Bob Paisley and, and Bill Shankly with, mm. with Liverpool. Real Madrid, maybe you can think of De Stefano, but he was a player. You never really mm. had like a manager, as far as I know, maybe I can be proven wrong, mm. that was synonymous with Real Madrid. Mm. Like it's always been just like having the best players yeah. and like having this win at all costs mentality. They were the king's club. Yeah, yeah. They were the if, king's if, club. If anyone has managed to kind of form an identity, it's really been Ancelotti, even when he wasn't there with Zidane, because mm. you could argue that Zidane was really picking up the pieces that Ancelotti left behind mm. and the way he was playing was like, okay, my players, I'm going to give them the platform to succeed, mm, but it's mm. really about giving the platforms for the best players in the world to be free to, to, to let their yeah. talent shine. Yeah, I mean, I do think Academy has a big part to, to 100%. play in it as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I definitely do. Because yeah. if you have a group of like six or five mm. or six players that are all coming from a set style of yeah. play, carrying into the first team, of course it's going to shape the yeah. way you play. I think all big clubs should have an identity personally. I think all big clubs should try and stick to a certain way, a stick to a certain style. And that's the way I'm kind of looking at it with Manchester United. Now, for example, like you're looking at the managers that are potentially there. I'm looking for character, bro. I always say one of my first priorities for a manager is character. Mm. You look at Matt Busby, you look at um, Fergie. Yeah? They were massive characters. Do you know what I mean? And I, that's what I want in, in, at Manchester United. Now, it doesn't mean have to mean somebody that effing and blinded. Yeah. But I want a, somebody that embraces the size of the club. They Their chest is out. And this is why... Ten Hag was like as much as I wanted him initially because I was in the position right that I was just kind of because Oli was trying to kind of keep to Man United in a way, but I was in the position where I was like he started making me think you know what let's just scrap this DNA stuff because you can't even Im- you can't implement mm. it let's go and try something new but I kind of nah I kind of like the way Manchester United played football under Ferguson I'm not saying now replicate Ferguson I'm not saying that but. The, f- the basis was always to entertain, be fast, be aggressive, yeah. wide players. You, you can, you that's can get up, that, that, That's kind of my point about like, um, what we were just talking about Chelsea, right? It doesn't have to be like, oh, the build up and like no, how Ferdinand no. used to attack from the wings. No. Football moves on. Conte was different to Jose. No, 100%. Football, football moves on. Football evolves. But the core principles of being a team that their, their first goal is to entertain, to mm-hmm. excite, to play on the front foot. You can find a modern day manager mm-hmm. that implement like he's a possessional based manager yeah. that also Im- implements that. Like Jurgen Klopp is different to previous Liverpool mm-hmm. managers in that he's more modern, but mm-hmm. it's still the same core principles, mm-hmm. core fundamentals that Liverpool fans want to see from their. Football. I think it's super important to. It's it's super important what the fan base push out. Yeah, though, you know what I mean because you look at people like Tata Martino and these guys that were man- managers of and um, who's the other guy. Um, the, uh, the one that uh, was, uh, and, uh Valverde yes sorry you look never embraced by yeah. Barcelona never. And, by he won, never. and he won with them and as well won, too. never embraced because of the way they play and I think it's down to what the fan base demand uh, Liverpool fans now you look at when they're linked with Deserby they're like what yeah. nah he doesn't represent he doesn't he doesn't yeah. feel like a representation of us do you know what I mean and I think it's a duty f- maybe for the clubs to do it to the fans but that's, they have to listen to the fans in them in them cases do you know what I mean because you will never see Real Madrid higher and Allegri. I mean, sorry, you'll never see Barcelona hire Allegri. Yeah, never. You just wouldn't see you'd it. you never see Real Madrid hire Pep. You, like, so why yeah. do Man United hire LVG? Or do you know what I mean? And even though Benitez won with Liverpool, look, I don't know how synonymous Liverpool... I don't know if Liverpool fans ever love him like that. Yeah. Even the same thing with Gerard Houllier. I don't know if they love him. Like, yeah, you gave us the domestic treble. You gave us the Champions League, but they don't love you like that. Do you know what I'm trying to 100%. say? They love Kenny Dalglish. No, it's the they same love with Mar- 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 United is the perfect example, right? He literally came second, won three trophies the year before, and mm-hmm. he never gained the love of the fan base. Dude, for, for Jose Mourinho by Man yeah. United fans. Yeah, the thing is, Jose 
is a tough one because we love Jose. No, we, we didn't love, love Jose his, the personality. Yeah, but yeah, we the didn't football, love what he the football, put on even, yeah. like we we keep that that's our best statistical yeah, season. Yeah. United fans were complaining for most of it. Yeah, bro. yeah, exactly. But yeah. Jose is a weird one because he galvanizes galvanizes the fans and all that. You know what I mean? Yeah. The way he is. So you love him, but his football no, I'm not, is I'm product. Purely yeah. the football, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It, nah. never, it never stuck with United I do fans. think it's a duty of the fans. And you look at the same things you mentioned with Arsenal. Arsenal, they demand it now, right? After If Arteta just somehow decided, I'm off to Barcelona... They're gonna want somebody in that same similar yeah, kind of mold. hiring like Simeone, for example. No, really. it, yeah, you yeah. can't. You just, it just, it just doesn't happen. You know what I mean? It just doesn't sound right for Arsenal to have Diego. Simeone. And that's the it thing with doesn't. Chelsea, right? You even look at last year, but they literally went with Graham Potter, and I think Graham Potter is a great coach. Such a change. that's the least Chelsea, Chelsea. manager alive. Bro. Yeah, yeah. And it's like I guess, I guess it's kind of just to summarize all of this, right? Chelsea have just completely lost track. And lost, like they, they've completely forgotten who they are, bro. Mm-hmm. You look at the club, and again, bar the name, bar the the the, the, the whatever the stands are mm-hmm. called, it's a shadow mm-hmm. of what that club used to be. And that's and that's the way, isn't it? Mm. Let's talk about uh, another guy that was a huge, obviously, mm-hmm. figure in that game. The one who ended up scoring the game winner, Virgil Van Dijk. Van Dijk. That was a big conversation, kind of coming out of that. Me personally, I find it kind of funny that all of a sudden his legacy moment is apparently now a, a Carabao, a Carabao Cup, yeah. Cup winner. And I always find it funny to be honest. Sometimes I'm guilty of this as well too. When a center back scores, like that's when we start talking about him a lot. Yeah, but he yeah. did play an amazing game. Mm-hmm. And my point more so to that is like, yo, he's literally won man of the match in the Champions League final. Like that, that's a coming second to Messi in a Ballon d'Or. Like that's mm-hmm. a big moment. The Carabao Cup is a good moment on his resume, but mm-hmm. that's not the, the leading thing. But a lot of the, the conversation that followed as it usually does is like, oh, has there ever been a center back as good as Van Dyke? Like mm-hmm. what he's doing right now? Like has anyone been, ever been as good as him? I don't really want to sit here and, and, and talk to you about like, oh, is he better than Rio? Is he better than John Terry? Because I feel like that's overplayed. But more so, is this kind of one of those situations we often talk about where like, we're, we're comparing apples and oranges here, yeah. especially with center backs, a position that has changed so much over the last 20 years. 100%. I, I just look at it. And I, as you mentioned, like there's all these defenders that you can name from the past. And look, they've all done great things. You know what I mean? They've scored big goals. They scored big moments. So we don't need to talk about that, right? We look at someone like Sergio Ramos, for example, mm. flipping out. If you wanted to go through his clutch list, he's he's going to be the most clutch player of all time or whatever. Mm-hmm. So it is a bit overplayed, those discussions. But one thing you would say is, look, as I always say, yeah, is a generation thing, right? Mm-hmm. In his generation of this Premier League, he's the best defender of his generation. By a mile. It's as simple as that. He's the best defender of his generation. And... That's how I always see it. Like, you can separate certain things, right? Mm. He's the best defender of his generation. In this new era of defending, high line, front foot, aerial duels, whatever it is, he's A plus at nearly all of them type of things, right? He's amazing at it. And the thing is, he's developed developed every year as a leader. And this year, that was his kind of crowning moment. Because is it me? Or everything feels looks a little bit better when you got that captain armband of on your Of course, bro. Everything just looks a little bit yeah. better. You Especially know what I mean? Especially his and last year, too. I mean, is, it, was, it was definitely an off year. In that yeah. Year. And the fact that he did it with a bunch of kids or on the pitch and he told them, get close, let me, you know what I mean? Set screens. I'm going to yeah. go and do the job. And he, <laughs> he did, did it that. twice, by the way. Yeah, he did yeah, it. He exactly. Said, hey, so the first one don't count. Yeah. I got y'all with another one. There yeah, we yeah, go. Yeah. You know what I mean? So listen, Van Dyke is the absolute legend. And one, one thing I always say, yeah. Uh, it's big games, big players, big goals. You know what I mean? That's been a thing it, recently, huh? That's what I mean. Yeah, big moments, bro. Big In them moments, it, ne- it always seems... It's not coincidence that these moments fall to the biggest players and often the leaders because they want it more. Because mm. they understand it. They know what this means. And I'm not surprised that it was Van Dijk that scored the winner in that game because you're looking at it and you're like, crazy that you're looking around the pitch and Van Dijk is, might actually be the biggest goal threat on the pitch. Yeah. Do you know how insane that is? You know what I mean? And he, he sees the moment. He could have easily lost that game and we would have been like, oh, well, what can he do? What could have Van Dijk have done? He said, nah, I'm not going to leave this for any excuses, hypotheticals. Mm. Nah, I'm going to go win my team the game. And for me, it's not really a legacy moment, but it was a moment where you're like, you know what? Yeah, yeah. Now we'll talk yeah, about it 100%. Yeah. Like when we talk about these great players, we don't talk about typically one moment. We talk about like, their body of work is my yeah. favorite word, right? Like this is now a checkpoint almost mm-hmm. in his career. Like another Carabao Cup mm-hmm. on the, I think this is the, the, the third final in a row now, by the mm-hmm. way, that he's been Liverpool's man of the match in the final. Um, the thing is, with, with these discussions, and I know, look, I get carried away in it as well. I call Trent the best right back in Prem history, right? Yeah. So I can't sit here yeah, and, yeah. and say any of this stuff, but I always do think 
you have to wait five. I know it sounds crazy, but you have to wait like five years after these guys retire. That's how I always feel and see how their legacy goes. When you're having a legacy discussion now, if you're talking about best, okay, that's fine. Like yeah. you don't have to wait five yeah. years. But when people are talking about legacies, you have to see how people's legacies age for me. I think you have to see how it goes. Because in the moment, we're going to be like, yeah, this person's great, is legacy. But in five years, you might not even think about this guy again. Not mm. saying that'll be Van Dyke. But there's certain players that I remember living through. And I'm like, yeah, but when now five years has passed, I don't even think about them. Company they don't even is the biggest mind. example of that. Com- company. Just, like, yeah, yeah. I remember company. watching Company growing up and thinking this guy was absolutely outrageous. Yeah. And now I look at the way Twitter talks about him. Yeah. It's like, yo. You think he's a scrub, yeah, yeah, you, you If you never watched Company, you just read the way Twitter talk about yeah. him. It's like, yo, he's just a nobody. Bro. Yeah. Like error prone. Like, he, yeah, he wasn't a perfect center back. No. But bro, Vincent Company was a boss, man. But he was absolute boss. I'm not trying like, to say he's better than Van Dyke. I think Van Dyke is the like Van Dyke. I think Van Dyke. I think he's better. Than, I think Van Dyke is better. Than yeah, Kobe, like yeah. Van, Van Dyke, right? It, it's tough to compare him really to these old center backs for a number of reasons. A, I always say that one of the biggest ways the game has changed is really defensively, hmm. where I think now more than ever, and what I'm about to say is not to discredit any defender that plays today or to prop up any defender that played back then. Mm-hmm. But the way I look at the game now, and it's a it's a credit, especially to the managers. Teams defend as a unit a lot more than they did back in the day. Mm-hmm. I felt that a lot of like uh, defenders were often left exposed on islands or dragged out wide to mm. face wingers or, or strikers. I, f- I feel personally a lot more than they are now. I don't have the yeah. statistical evidence to do it, but I just look at now the way that sweeper keepers have become yeah, a huge yeah, yeah. part of the game where if a ball goes over the top, mm. you have that insurance policy. You now have a def- one defensive midfielder kind of mm-hmm. sitting in front of a back four, marshalling and sweeping up danger, mm-hmm. where before you're playing with two midfielders, mm-hmm. maybe they both go up and leave so much space. Yeah. So in that regard, like we often see these errors that Ramos make or that Puyol make or that Vidic mm-hmm. makes or John Terry makes. But I always say, if any defender gets dragged out wide, the name of the game is attackers embarrassing defenders. Yeah, yeah. Most defenders are going to get exposed in those mm-hmm. situations. What makes Van Dyke so great, though, is the fact that you really look at his game, and physically, he definitely has no weakness. Mm. In the air, mm. one of the best center backs I've ever seen in my mm. life. Fast, mm. strong, mm. commanding. He doesn't really have a, an issue physically. And then technically, on the ball, mm. ball That's playing is, is, is really, really good. That switch that he has, that ball over the top is really good. And then also his ability to read the game. Mm-hmm. The one thing maybe that you can ever get at him is kind of like his focus levels. His and then also chance. his, yeah, his, like he's not as aggressive mm-hmm. or as front footed as other guys. But when you want to talk about really complete center backs, bro, I think he's up there with, with, yeah. with the ones I've seen. I mean, look, if you're doing attribute stacking, which I yeah. hate personally yeah. when it comes to debates of, of football players, like, oh, but he's faster. He's this. Because yeah, some attributes are worth more yeah, than others. And, right? and, yeah. And it's also how you do it as well. Like, not all the, f- the the greatest defenders are going to be fast, yeah. but they read the games. Their IQ. I think the, I think centre backs is the most it was the word unmeasurable position yeah. that you could possibly have because it's all about what's in and the brain. And that's why it's how- cringe, by the way. Now yeah. that when I see these little stack comparisons, about yeah, tackles yeah. one and stuff it like that. That's sense. not how you that's, you can't because you have to take no. context in those stats, right? Like yeah. a defender who is who is playing in a weaker team that defends yeah. more is obviously going to have higher defensive yeah. metrics. Than a guy whose team has the ball all the time. And Does it make all, him a better defender? Defending is all about your IQ, man. Mm. Your defending is all about your IQ. That's why slow people can be defenders. Yeah. I mean, it's you all look about at your two, IQ. The two greatest quote unquote that you hear a lot about from the older mm. eras is Barezi and Beckenbauer. Mm. Neither of them are six foot three. Mm. Neither of them are athletic freaks. But when you when you hear people the way they talk about them and you watch their footage, they almost are never caught out yeah. in the wrong Barezi place. Barezi was 5'9 now? Yeah, He's but he, he almost never loses headers because just the way he positions Timing. his body and stuff like Timing. that. It's the same thing we were saying about when Lissandro came to the Premier League. I was like, in the air, you're going to get cooked. But yeah. fair play to the guy. He doesn't That's actually never get issue cooked. Has, you know what I'm yeah, trying yeah. to say? So it's all about your IQ and stuff. So it's a, it's hard to measure. So as you mentioned, when you see the stats and stuff, it's, it's, it's laughable. But if you are building a centre-back in a, in a lab, you would really want it to look like Van Dyke. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You really would want it to look like Van Dyke in all fairness if you were building it just by attribute on Pro Evo when you used to have the acceleration, top speed, shoot, did it. Van Dyke, you will pretty much look yeah, like course. a Van Dyke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the He's same the thing prototype. we always yeah, say. Yeah. Like, if you wanted to build a proper number nine, you'd build probably Zlatan, wouldn't yeah. you? On, 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 if you're like a robot, you'll build Zlatan. Yeah. So that's how I look at it with Van Dyke. Attribute wise, pretty much has everything. Everything else comes into it, though, in these debates, as you mentioned, what you've done, IQ, this. So, so it's, 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 hard to, it's hard to measure, but 
in his generation, in this generation, the Premier League. Yeah, he's the he, he's, he's the, the best. Is he the best of his whole generation? For me, that's up for debate, and it depends when you start yeah, his generation. Hundred percent. But in terms of the Premier League, he's the best. So I see it. I, I would agree with that. To mm-hmm. be honest with you, like I, I hear a lot. Like obviously, Twitter will go above and beyond to kind of make one point or the mm-hmm. other. But like this whole thing now, where it's like, oh, look at the mistakes that John Terry made mm-hmm. or that Vidic made. It's a totally different game, man. Honestly, like you look at the amount of space left in behind and also not just in behind because that's mm-hmm. what a lot of people use to, to big up today's defenders. Oh, they play high lines. But also the space in front of them. Mm-hmm. Bro, they have like islands of space in mm-hmm. front of them that they're being asked to come into. They don't yeah. obviously have anything in behind. Like they're, they're being dragged left to right, right well, and center. One thing is it's all generational bias, right? Yeah. Everything is generational bias because I remember when we were growing up, right? When I was growing up, and they were talking about the 99 team and they were talking about our 08 team. They were talking about the 99 team like they were scrubs. Yeah. Like, what? They can't handle... They can't Stan, live with Rooney. Yeah, yeah. They can't live with Ronaldo. They can't, li- they can't live with these yeah, guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's just the way it is. The way they spoke about the Invincibles to how they spoke about 98 Arsenal. It's like... It, every generation, you're going to look back at the other generation and be like, nah, yeah. that was kind of washed. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it, that's just the way it is. It's a generational bias, but what we try and do on this platform is try and be remove all of them type yeah. of biases. Do you know what I mean? And just try and look at it objectively. But it's, it's, that's the way it's going to be. Um, Saka and all these guys at Arsenal currently, they're probably going to age better than Robert Perez, Jumberg. No, of and, course. But and it's because men, of how the role has changed. Literally. Literally. Like, yeah. mate, wait until they start throwing Declan Rice as the new Vieira, bro. It's going to happen. One stuff. thing I'll so, say, though, is I think with Van Dyke that separates him from a lot of those other conversations... I really think that he's probably the guy who could probably play in most of those eras. I no, it, listen. When you reach a certain level, you should be able to hear most eras. That they, okay? There's some positions where you're like, can I imagine you in a four four two era? Like, yeah. I don't want to be not 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 for no clickbait, but yeah. you look at for, for Mo Salah for example, right? All timer for me, what an elite player. But then you think to yourself, okay, in a four four two era, where would he play? Would, would he be just that right winger? I mean, you even said about so, Michael Owen, for example, in an era of one striker, is he playing on the, off the left? Exactly. Yeah. Like, so there's, I, I was there's definitely, perfect, some, there's definitely yeah. some players who do not age as well. You're, and they, yeah. they're, they're all timers in their own right. Yes. But they don't, they're not like, you don't, tra- you can't, they don't transcend time and yeah, years. Yeah. I think Van Dyke, you look at him, I, I think I think he has all the physical and technical traits yeah, to, I fully to play agree. in any era. I fully agree. And I think you got that with KDB as well. I think he could play in any era, yeah. any, any position in yeah. any era. So, you do there is some players that do it and there is some players that listen as you just mentioned Michael Owen like well if he if Michael Owen came through now he'll be on the left wing mm. he'll be on the left wing yeah. if Jermaine Defoe came through right now yeah. he'll be on the left wing bro it, that, that's just the way it goes isn't it so mm-hmm. yeah I mean these are things that people don't factor in when they yeah. have these debates 100% so. bro 100% you know I mean? now big up Van Dyke, big up Liverpool again congratulations on on the Carabao <laughs> as two United fans hopefully that's the last trophy you guys win this <laughs> year <laughs> but yo that's going to do it for this week. Quick little topic. Quick little roundup of the Carabao Cup. Mm-hmm. Giving our thoughts. Hope you guys enjoy. Like, share, subscribe. Also, shout out to BR as well. Powering the show. You know what I mean? We've got all our clips going out on BR as well. You guys see it probably all over social media. Yeah, yeah. We play the games, which have been going crazy, by the way. Bro. People have been... Somebody came up to me in the street and was like, how do you guys have that knowledge? And I was like, hey, it's <laughs> or natural. Nerds. Or nerds. Man, it's natural. So yeah, man. Shout out BR. <laughs> Keep looking out for that as well. Just follow BR. I'm sure yeah, you guys yeah. follow... If you follow us before you follow me, yeah, right? we're not that big, <laughs> we're not that big but guys, we'll be back next week. Yeah, catch you.